SS Gigantic Across the Atlantic, the story of the world's biggest ocean liner ever. SS Gigantic Across the Atlantic, the story of the world's biggest ocean liner ever, and its disastrous maiden voyage, based on a true story, sort of, by Peter Selgin. Call me Pipsqueak, everyone else does. Many years ago, never mind how long exactly, I set out to sea on the biggest ocean liner ever. I was a mere lad when I first laid eyes on her, rising like a giant ghost over the factories, churches, and chimneys of hyperbole on the coast of Ireland. Oh, she was a beautiful sight. Soon as I saw her, I knew I'd do anything to sail on her. That night, there was a huge storm. I hid in the doorway of an inn. Hearing voices through the door, I quietly let myself in. Sailors and seamen were gathered around a captain with a big white beard. He was saying, My new ship, the SS Gigantic, is the biggest, fastest, most beautiful and luxurious ship ever built. Ever. His name was Captain Bragg. He was talking about the gigantic ship I'd seen. It's so gigantic, you can't fit it in a picture. It's so gigantic, if you started out as a little boy at the bow of the ship, by the time you walked to the stern, you would be a very old man. It's so gigantic, it can travel around the world without moving. It's so gigantic, it needs over one million propellers, a fraction of which are seen here. It's so gigantic, even its propellers need propellers. You need a rocket ship to get from the bottom to the top. If you sit at a table for two, you'll be 100 miles away from the next table. It's so gigantic, it has fields of corn for cows and baseball. It even has oil fields. It's so gigantic, its pool has a beach and tides and room for other ships. You need a magnifying glass to see people, or maybe a telescope. When it leaves a city, the city closes down because there's nobody left. I just had to sail on that wonderful ship, so I yelled, Please, please, Captain Bragg. Take me with you on your gigantic ship. On my gigantic ship? A pipsqueak like you? See what I mean? I said, I'll be your lookout. I can see better than any of you. From across the room, I read one of Captain Bragg's uniform buttons. It said, By appointment to His Majesty, King George III, Button Manufacturers Clyde Q. Cromwell Sons, LTD, Surrey, England, Patent number 0367946-332-01. Captain Bragg said, You're hired. And that's how I became the SS Gigantic's lookout. One week later, the SS Gigantic set off on her maiden voyage. The rich passengers were so rich giant cranes were needed to load their diamonds and gold. On SS Gigantic's passenger list that day, there were, among others, John Jacob Astounding III, J. Paramount Pompous, billionaire financier, Xavier Extreme Exaggerate, SS Gigantic designer, Colonel and Mrs. Archibald Granger, Benjamin Big Behind, tycoon, Dr. and Mrs. Lador, myself. Billionaires, all. As we sailed away, every little ship and boat tried to follow us. Runts, termites, dinky specks of dust. Get lost! The billionaire passengers laughed, danced, and stuffed their faces. Meanwhile, high up in the crow's nest, I kept lookout. 
That month, the sea was full of icebergs. As a result, there were many sinkings. As gigantic as the SS Gigantic was, the average iceberg was even more gigantic. And yet, the biggest part was underwater. I tried to warn Captain Bragg. Silly pipsqueak, he said. The SS Gigantic is unsinkable. It has a quadruple hull and 4,237,864 watertight doors. It's so gigantic it can hold all the water in the world. See figure BX3-470-1.4. Get lost! Besides, the SS Gigantic is made of 100% inflatable, vulcanized, waterproof rubber. I got lost. Days went by. Then, it was midnight, April 15th. A dark, cold, gloomy night. When suddenly... Well, I yelled, Iceberg! Dead ahead! Then I rang my bell. Ding, ding, ding! But it was too late. The SS Gigantic's waterproof rubber quadruple hull crashed right into the iceberg, smashing it into a zillion tiny ice cubes. And the iceberg sank. See, said Captain Bragg, I told you the SS Gigantic is unsinkable. Maybe so, but as any good sailor knows, the ocean contains many mysteries. Seahorses, sea urchins, sea anemones, sea snakes, sea cucumbers, sea saws, sea vacuum cleaners, and sea gumball machines. And most deadly and dangerous of all, the dreaded sea thumbtack. And so, the very next day, without warning, pop! Close watertight doors! Activate the pumps! Everyone jumped overboard. We were all drowning. At last, Captain Bragg gave up. Abandon ship! Luckily for us, all the teeny tiny minuscule dinky bitsy unimportant insignificant pip squeaky little ships and boats came to the rescue. They saved everyone. Including Captain Bragg, who got rescued by the itsiest, bitsiest, dinkiest, puniest, weeniest little boat of them all. As for the SS Gigantic, it was so gigantic, it's still sinking. The end.